In her new book, Life in Five Senses, author Gretchen Rubin writes this. My sense of smell had the superpower of making me feel present in my body at the present moment. I couldn't state more succinctly or perfectly why it has become so important in my life to be surrounded by scent. And today I want to talk about the ways in which cultivating a scent environment and creating associations with scent have been a real boon for my mental health. So I'm going to tell you how I use scent in my life, all of the different means I use to bring that into my home and my person. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the ways that I don't use scent. And then I'm going to explain why I find scent so useful for mental health purposes. So let me start by saying that I use all sorts of means to make my surroundings good smelling. My most common by far means is using my diffuser. So a diffuser is just a little electric device. This one has a USB-C cord and what it does is it takes water and a few drops of oil and it diffuses those into the air into volatile particles that fill up your room with scent over time. I also love to use scented candles, um, especially more natural smelling ones like this one, which was made by my friend Beth from Baldamia. I sometimes burn incense that I get from a number of different places. I like room sprays and linen sprays and that sort of thing. And I also like live plants that have scents. So up on my balcony, I have things growing like rosemary and jasmine and geranium. You would think from that huge list that there is just a cacophony of smell going on in my house. And that's really not the case. And that's because of what I don't do specifically. The first thing that I don't do is I don't use any sort of scented laundry detergent. I have sensitive skin, so a lot of the fragrance additives in laundry detergent or in things like dryer sheets or fabric softeners can caused me to break out in a rash. So I always use unscented laundry detergent and that becomes just a clean, empty base to start from. Really try to keep things to one scent at a time. And I do switch out scents from one to another instead of having a basic scent that's always there in my house because nose blindness is a real thing and you will become immune to scents after smelling it for a little while. In fact, it can happen as quickly as in a couple of minutes. So I switch out from day to day what scent that I am using at home, but I try not to have a bunch of different ones going all at the same time. I also avoid chemically scents. One thing to realize is that all scents are chemicals. Even natural scents are caused by chemicals, but there's a difference between being chemicals and being chemically. 
And one thing I've noticed is that when you use natural scents, when you use natural oils and that sort of thing, they tend to dissipate more quickly in the environment than some chemically scents. So when I use natural scents, I can expect them not to be hanging around forever. And that's a good thing because that means as I move through different scents in my life, I don't get that nose blindness and I don't get the distraction of one scent mixing with another in maybe a not very pleasant way. I'm not a big fan of like cleaning products that leave sort of a chemically scent afterwards or those plug-in deodorizers or that sort of thing that just don't smell like a good natural scent. I also use unscented or very lightly scented soaps and shower products. The one exception to that is things like bath bombs or shower bombs because I think of those more as aromatherapy during the experience than creating a scent that will stay on my skin. I do use personal scents, but I tend to use fragrance oils or something that's going to stick very close to my body rather than spreading out into the world around me. I choose scents that have pleasant associations for me. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer, right? But especially if you have childhood trauma or if you have negative experiences, which I think all of us have, those things can be associated pretty strongly with scents that other people might consider good scents. So just think about that when you're creating a scent environment in your home and choose things that actually make you happy or calm or soothe you. Or even things that make you energized or focused because that can actually be super useful as well. And finally, I do not use any sort of scented trash bags or toilet paper or tissues or anything like that. Again, it comes back to those scents that feel natural versus chemically. I, I just don't like most of those scents, to be honest. So here's the thing about smell. Smell is a background sense. We humans process the world mostly through sight and sound and smell and touch and taste are kind of further in the background for us. And that means that to pick out a scent and to really pay attention to it requires a conscious act usually. I love that because it means when I'm writing or editing or reading even things that require my primary focus, scent can be there in the background. It's not distracting to me the way music would be or having something on the television, for example. Even so, that scent is available for me as a home base to come back to when I feel myself getting distracted. My diffuser scents actually act as a reminder to me sometimes that I should be writing, I should be focusing on what I'm doing at the present moment instead of scrolling on my phone or getting involved in some other project that has distracted me. And I use the term home base intentionally because that is a term from meditation that is the thing that you come back to to restore your focus as you're meditating. And I do use scent as a home base for meditation. I love burning incense or having the diffuser going with a specific scent when I'm meditating because scent is a natural companion to breath. And so much of meditation is focusing on and paying attention to that breath that is always with you that when you add scent to that breath, that is just one more layer that brings you back to that same home base point. Another thing that I learned from Gretchen Rubin's book, Life in Five Senses, is that unlike taste, for example, our associations with scent are not innate. Different people and different cultures have different associations with different scents 
and different people can consider scents good or bad depending on the associations around that scent that they grew up with. What I love about that is that that means that you can associate certain moods and certain feelings with different scents. And that can become a really useful tool. If you know that when you get anxious and you smell a certain scent, it soothes you and calms you down, you can come back to that scent over and over again to help reduce that anxiety. The same thing goes with stress or any other big emotions that you are having trouble dealing with at any particular time. By the way, if you are new here, if you don't know me, I do struggle with mental illness. I have complex PTSD. And one of the symptoms of that is emotional dysregulation. So it helps me a lot to be able to recognize my emotions and then have a very easy and accessible way to kind of bring myself down from very high emotions or pull myself out of a spiral. One of the reasons that I think that that works for me especially well is that smell is also unlike sight or sound in that for me at least smells kind of all meld together to become one thing which makes it harder to get distracted by all of the different parts. If I'm listening, I might hear cars outside and people making noise and music in the house and maybe a television from upstairs and footsteps and the bang of the gate outside of my window. And I can find myself getting agitated by the lack of cohesiveness in all of those different things. And the same thing with sight. Instead of focusing on one thing, I can find my attention drawn all over the room. But with scent, all of the scents in an area can kind of meld into a whole. And I find that way more soothing and easy to focus on. I am really curious if you use scent in your home or on your body, and if you have found any mental health benefits from doing so. If so, I would love to hear about it in the comments. And if you'd like me to go further into depth on the specific scents that I really enjoy, I would love to do that in another video if there's enough interest. So like this video if this is something that you're into, share it with anyone that you think might also be interested. And until next time, I am wishing you love and joy and all of those good things and I can't wait to talk to you again. Do